Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are gonna be answering the question, does a brushless motor pull power from our electronic speed control? Now this question is quite important to those of us who end up building up our own power systems for our radio control model. The reason why is because it directly affects the reliability of the power system as a whole. Now understanding electricity or power and how it flows in our components is quite a challenge for us. Now the reason why it's challenging for us is because we can't really hear it, we can't really see it, we, we have difficulty getting a sense of it and most of us don't want to try and feel it. So what we have to do is we have to measure it. We have to measure the electricity by either measuring the voltage, measuring the current, and then we can calculate things like wattages and current flow and uh, capacities and all this other stuff. So let's take a look at the speed control and how it reacts and takes our input and sends it to the motor. So if we look at the speed control as a whole, what it does is it takes control input from the receiver on board. So the transmitter is in my hand and I go ahead and give it a throttle input, whether I'm pulling a trigger or raising the stick up on the transmitter. Once I do that, it's received by the receiver on board and then it goes ahead and sends that signal to the electronic speed control. The electronic speed control is going to take power from the onboard battery and it's going to send a pulse to the motor. Now that pulse is going to be made up of a voltage. That voltage is going to be consistent with the battery that is on board. If you are using a four cell lithium polymer battery pack that would suggest you have about 14.8 volts nominal on that system. And that's what's going to be sent out from that speed control as a pulse to the motor. Now, in addition to the voltage, you also have a frequency that is going to be applying in this power system. That frequency is dependent on the RPM that you have requested out of that motor with the signal um, how hard you've squeezed that throttle. So if you are looking at running that motor at 1000 RPM, you'll see that voltage of about 14.8 nominal and you will have a specific frequency. As you go up to 10,000 RPM from that motor, you're gonna have a different frequency associated with that voltage. This is primarily what the speed control is doing. It's sending that voltage and it's sending it out at a specific frequency. So now let's take a look at, is the brushless motor's responsibility to pull power from that speed control? Well, the first thing that we wanna do in order to get a good understanding is we have to make a couple assumptions to sort of simplify things. The first assumption that we wanna make is that a brushless power system is all hooked up and it's going to be operated with zero load. The second assumption that we wanna make is that there will be no power consumed upon the motor maintaining a constant speed. Now the way that we can do this and make this assumption is that Newton's first law does state that an object in motion tends to stay in motion as long as there's no external forces applied to it. Now we do know that there is nothing in this world that is 100% efficient, even that situation that we're talking about. For example, the bearings on our brushless motor are not 100% efficient. As that motor spins, it's going to consume power in those bearings, slowing the shaft down, and in order to maintain constant speed, we have to put power in there to actually keep the rotation. However, for this example, we are going to simplify it by just saying that there's no power consumed. This is gonna make it a little more simple for us to understand. As our motor is maintaining a constant speed, let's assume that it's maintaining 1000 RPM. There is going to be a specific frequency that is associated with that at the voltage of our main power supply. Now that frequency and voltage is going to have a current draw of zero amps. The reason why it's going to be zero amps is because the current draw is related to the load that is placed on our power system. This is where things get interesting. The load is directly proportional to the amount of current that is drawn from our power system. Now, since in our example, we do not have a load, we are gonna get that zero amps. And of course the resulting uh, parameter that we get is our zero amps multiplied by our 14.8 volts uh, results in that zero watts. So there's no power actually being consumed with zero amps being drawn. Now, if we end up looking at the current draw versus our brushless motor load, the motor indeed pulls power from the electronic speed control. It is specifically governing that current value. As the load increases, the current that is pulled from the speed control is going to increase. The current is not coming from the speed control. The motor is pulling that current and the 
Speed Control simply has to be able to provide it. That is the exact same with the battery. The battery has to be able to provide that current that the motor is drawing. When there is an increase of current being drawn, that is going to result in the power being changed. Remember how we ended up saying that zero current means zero watts. Any voltage multiplied by our zero remains as zero watts. However, as the current starts to increase, we get a power consumption that is also increasing. So the overall power that is being consumed is highly dependent on that current value. It's very much dependent on the voltage value as well. However, the only thing that is really varying in our situation that we're talking about is the current specifically. So how do we draw conclusions to this? Well, knowing that the motor is ultimately responsible for altering and varying the current that is within our system, that is quite important to us. We do know that this current that is being drawn is directly proportional to the load. So if you apply a significant load to that motor, that motor is going to try and push that load. If it tries to push a load that is greater than what the motor can handle, you're gonna have some issues with that motor. Now the same can be true for the rest of the power system. If you go ahead and place a significant load on a very small power system, you could potentially overload any part or component within that power system. This is where I see a lot of people who are going ahead and building up their first power system make some small mistakes by overloading their system, ultimately leading to a higher current draw and this higher current draw is above the maximum continuous for the motor or the speed control or the battery or all components combined and this is where you could get potential failure. The weakest link is always the first thing that fails. So next time that you're building your power system keep this in mind. Understand the current is directly related to that load that you have placed on that motor and that load if you have an issue with the amount of current, you can reduce that load in order to have a sufficient amount of power being consumed and not going over your maximum thresholds. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like this where we're talking about specific items, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in that next video. Thank you for watching.